without waiting for any, uh, anyone else to do so, he declared war on the United States because the United States had essentially been supporting the British uh, in the merchant uh, war. And they lost ships and lost men and lost warships. And so Hitler was already upset at the Americans. So he was, he was ready to declare war on America on December 10th, 1941. And then he immediately sent submarines to the US and they arrived about three weeks later. And the first one to hit the Bahamas area uh, came in from Bermuda in January 1942. But the, the first sinking occurred in February 1942, and they stayed here until September 1944, but they had a tactic of attacking very intensely uh, until while well, the pickings were good, and then retreating and going somewhere else, and throwing the Allies off guard. So the Allies built an airfield in Nassau, they built all kinds of countermeasures, and there was nothing to, to attack for periods of up to a year at a time. Eventually, the, the way to succeed was convoys. Uh, the Americans and the British convoyed all their merchant ships, so that they were clustered together and they had mutual protection. And the submarine might take one or two ships out, but the, he would be chased away by the, by the uh, destroyers and aircraft. Most of the submarines were sunk by aircraft, not destroyers. <clears throat> aircraft were by far the best. And in the end of the, towards the end of the war, the Americans succeeded by sitting in the middle of the Atlantic and catching refueling submarines as they came up for air and as they wanted to, they had all the intelligence. But for the beginning of 1942, the, the Allies did not have the intelligence. They, they were blind to the radio intelligence. Uh, so for about three months in 1942, uh, March, April, May, June, the uh, Germans really ran rampant, and there was essentially no defense to speak of. In this area, uh, even though we only managed to sink four submarines, and none of them actually in the Bahamas, there's a popular belief that there's a submarine in Bimini. Uh, it's just not proven by the facts. There, it's, losing a submarine is a big deal. And they were very knowledgeable on exactly where they were lost. There was one lost at Key, north, south of Key West, one lost on the Cuban uh, Key South border, which is far from Nassau, uh, another one lost uh, south of Bermuda, another one lost west of Bermuda. So uh, none of them lost in the Bahamas. There was a story of a submarine park found in Abaco. It, it just isn't, it's, uh, there's no truth to it. But, uh, so this area, and for, I'll skip through this very quickly because most of you are familiar with this, but for U.S. audiences, they are. Um, what do you call the area east of the Bahamas? Uh, you can call it Bermuda Triangle, then people think you're writing a fiction book. Uh, you, you, know, you, you can call it the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos. Uh, so uh, Bermuda Square just doesn't sound uh, as attractive. So um, I, I call it the Bahamas, including the area of Bermuda Triangle, which is down to San Juan. Basically, it's a million square miles. The Bahamas is one tenth of that, about uh, 10, 100,000 square miles of area. These are the channels uh, that they use. Um, you're all very familiar with them. Basically, anything coming through between Cuba and uh, Hispaniola, they would attack uh, ships coming through there. And the main target for the Germans uh, and the Italians, we'll, we'll talk more about the Italians, but was tankers, frankly. The tankers were the biggest. Uh, uh, one of the German uh, officers said he was working for the largest scrapping industry in the world. It was a tonnage war. You, you had to sink a, so many tons a month to strangle the Allies before they could replenish those tons. And not only were you sinking, they didn't care what was in the cargo. They really didn't, except for the oil tankers. Um, because uh, it's the ship's utility, the, the fact that if the ship wasn't sunk, it could continue to ply and, and provide more and more tonnage to English and England's uh, uh, supply war to, to build up a campaign to retake Europe and to take North Africa. So. Uh, they, they judged how many tons of steel they could sink, what the ship weighed on a scale, and that's the tonnage. And in the Bahamas alone, in this area, the total of 666,000, nice round number, uh, tonnage was sunk. And uh, there were 6,000 men that manned those ships that were actually struck by submarines. And of those, 1,500 of them were killed, so about 4,500 of them survived. And uh, when they weren't picky, uh, there are some we verified cases where, for example, the Norwegians were very good sailors, and they just, um, a lot of the, they, they were the least likely to panic. Uh, they had been at sea for so long. The Uruguayans, by contrast, had just launched a version Navy, they captured some Italian ships, and uh, were much more skittish. But uh, the Norwegians, for example, sometimes they believed their own lifeboats were so well-founded, and the supplies on the rescuing ship were so poor, and the risk of torpedoing was so high on the ship that they, they gave up the chance of rescue and sailed to land themselves. And about 75% of the 4,000 men that made it to land did so by sailing there themselves. Uh, they, they didn't um, get rescued, but those that did obviously went wherever they were taken. So you could be sunk in the Bahamas and delivered to West Africa. If the ship was taken, uh, 
trip to West Africa, or Trinidad, or Virginia, or anywhere. So uh, fortunately for the history, uh, of the five ships that were sunk very close to the Bahamas, San Salvador, Abaco, and Utra, they were uh, landed in the Bahamas, and about five, four more were landed in Turks and Caicos. So there was a total of 345 uh, men that actually landed in the Bahamas, and there's five, uh, five graves uh, here, which we'll talk about later. So uh, this, to, this is meant to be confusing, so don't, this chart is, um, is very, uh, I know Paul Arner is an aviator, I believe this is an aviation chart, but it, it uh, this here is the Eastern Sea Frontier, that's the Atlantic Frontier, this is the Puerto Rico Frontier, the U.S. Gulf Frontier, the Panama Sector, and the Caribbean, the, like Southern Caribbean Trinidad Sector. So all of these different commands, and they don't all talk to each other very well, uh, some are in New York, some are in Miami, and so this is the kind of confusion that reigned. Yeah. There was multiple commands, it was very fractured, it was very fragmented, and not very effective at defending the coast. Um, and at first they thought that if you just ships in a submarine, uh, that it would you know, capture, you know, sink the sub, and that did happen once with Pan American pilots vectoring the submarine. As soon as it surfaced, the Pan Am pilots, who a lot of whom were in the Navy before, would radio in and say, we've just seen a sub in the Old Bahama Channel heading north the airplanes would go and hit it. But uh, a very confusing, um, when you think the submarines are under the water, the merchant ships are on the surface, the escort ships are on the surface, there's aircraft on the surface, on the above in the air, there's commercial aircraft, there's Navy aircraft, there's Army aircraft. It's a very, very confusing um, sector. So you know, there's not just one command you can go to for research. Um, what I find truly fascinating, and uh, it's not just me, but out of the five ships that were sunk in the Bahamas, Three of them were sunk by Italians, by the same Italian submarine. And you may ask, what, what the dickens were the Italians doing in the Bahamas? And there was only, it was as close as they ever got to North America in the whole war. And frankly, when the Italians joined the Germans, they had uh, the, one of the largest already built submarine fleets in the world. And um, that they were a huge asset to the Germans. Um, however, the Germans uh, tactically had a much uh, more disciplined approach. If you were a German U-boat commander, you were trained, you were as valuable as the submarine, in as much as you were trained for six months at least before you were given a, a wartime mission, and you were strictly to act in unison with other commanders. So as soon as you signed the convoy, you were not to attack, you were to call in your, your, your mates, and they were to assemble, and it could take three days or more for you to all assemble, and then they would be able to pick off and have the winnings. You, you might just be relegated to calling in a position. And uh, the Italians, on the other hand, were much more and acted independently. They were very successful on independent uh, attacks, but, uh, but were not well, uh, did not work well with groups. And their submarines were huge. They were like ships. They had, uh, they had windows in the conning tower so you could sit and look out the window at the ocean. Uh, they had, uh, some of them tried to pack airplanes into their subs. They, the French succeeded in packing airplanes. The Japanese definitely did. Um, huge, spacious uh, you know, subs with you know, 70 men as opposed to 55. And um, uh, much more, uh, the, the accounts of survivors are they were much more uh, uh, traditional and uh, jovial towards their captives. They, they, they were not as aggressive. But here's where the Italians, and um, this is the most important uh, voyage, and it's a submarine called the Enrico Tetsoli, and it's, they have a, an Italian submarine named after it to this day, and there was a, an Italian aristocrat named Carlo Francesco di Casato, and he was in charge of this submarine, and was extremely effective. He sank uh, six ships in a period of 10 days or so, as he came from Bermuda, and then he, he, he found a Greek ship which was owned by the Gumandras family, um, and he sank it within four miles of San Salvador. So the people of San Salvador, I have eyewitnesses who saw it burning, uh, who collected rubber from the shore. There was a one-legged American named A.B. Nairn who rode out before the morning to, to guide the reefs. Uh, it's an amazing story, and um, there was, I think, very few trucks on the island, there were 30 Greek men who were taken by Father um, Pericles Melius, his father's Rintos, and, uh, and then the Greek consul uh, looked after them, and the Greek community uh, welcomed them into their fold. And, um, other than that, the Red Cross was responsible. Uh, this is, may not be a very graphic picture, but uh, this here is the size of a man down there for scale. That's a torpedo. And these are the main type of uh, attack boats that the Germans used. And they were overwhelming the, uh, the, the type on the, the Type 7 on the top, and uh, the other type was Type 9. It was mostly Type 7 with some Type 9, which were very advanced. And uh, on the whole, the commanders that came to Bahamas were very highly decorated. 
about 40% um, about or more had the Knight's Cross, which is a very high uh, decoration. They were sal salty, seasoned veterans. They were extremely effective. If they weren't, they were yanked out uh, of their position and were not given another command. Uh, the Germans were very centralized control. Admiral Karl, Di Karl Dienitz, who took over Germany after Hitler was, uh, killed himself, uh, was a control freak, and he had his, he operated out of a castle that were in the west coast of France. They all reported to him. They called him Uncle Karl. Um, and he would uh, sort of slap them in if they, if they you know, made a mistake, like running into another sub. And he would congratulate them personally and take them for cognac if they did well. So they were very well looked after. They had officers' castles in France. They had sailors' uh, homes. Uh, they were definitely an elite. They got away with a lot in Paris that they wouldn't normally uh, get away with. Soldiers would not normally get away with. This is, um, if you can remember the map before, this is Savannah, the coast of Florida, Cuba, the Bahamas, and uh, obviously you know, all the way to Anagata, Puerto Rico. So each, each one of these dots is a ship that was sunk or attacked. Uh, probably 5 or 10% managed to get away without being sunk. There was a great case where the Domino was waiting to load Domino sugar in Revitas, uh, Cuba, and the ship was drifting. And it was just drifting off Cabarra, minding its own business at night with no lights, it's wartime. And along comes a submarine right alongside, a couple hundred feet. And they're, both parties were completely surprised. And, and they just sporadically started opening gunfire on each other, just machine guns, no torpedoes, no nothing. And, uh, and they, uh, the, the domino managed to damage the conning tower of the sub, and the sub sent some, you know, some bullets at the ship. But they both skedaddled and got out of each other's way quickly uh, with no fatalities. So uh, that was the exception. Uh, for the most part, the Germans didn't have a lot of intelligence about where these ships were. So they would sit in these open, they would scour the horizon with their naked eye, they had no radar, uh, so they were just hungrily looking for victims, looking for a smudge of smoke on the horizon in the daytime, looking for a cigarette on a ship at night, um, looking for any sign of a ship. They, would, they loved the, the full moon, they could see more ships that way, but they had to be much more delicate. If it was a bright sunlight, they would attack out of the sunlight uh, to blind the victims. And for most of the merchant ship, the first time they knew they were being attacked, the torpedo had already hit. It was too late to do anything. But there were 130 ships uh, that I count that were sunk, uh, at, that were merchant ships, and they were manned mostly from the United States, about 40%, about 20% from the United Kingdom, uh, then the next were the Dutch, then the Norwegians, the Swedes had about three, the Brazilians one, uh, the rest of them had only two or three, so the Latvians had a couple. Um, it was a real hodgepodge. You know, there were 20,000 ships at least that transited this area. So whoever happened to come across the bow of a submarine, uh, the largest one was 10,000, was 11,007 tons, and that was the first ship sunk in the Bahamas, the OA Knutson. So this is, uh, I'm gonna skim through them just to give an idea. Each one of these represents a month, and this was a professor uh, down in Columbia, uh, Cartagena, Columbia, who did a research on the impact of, Ger of German submarines in World War II. So this just gives you an idea. This is uh, uh, February uh, 1942, 